long time, the kilogram was a metal cylinder in a safe in France. Nobody really used it to weigh out day-to-day -day stuff, of course, but for scientists, it was still a useful thing to have. That's because in science, we like to have reference points. A particular thing, like a metal cylinder, that can represent something more abstract, like mass. And this applies to geology, in which case you're probably not dealing with questions of mass as much as time. But how do you find a physical reference point for time. For geologists studying the modern era, the physical reference point for time may be a quaint little lake in Canada, one that you can probably walk around in 15 minutes. Here's why one little lake might define the human age. This is Crawford Lake. It's a small lake, about 250 meters at its longest. A good swimmer could probably cross it in about five minutes. It's in a conservation area and UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, about 50 kilometers southwest of Toronto, surrounded by cedar trees, reconstructed indigenous longhouses, and a boardwalk. Also, their website says they have maple syrup tastings there. Like, Canada, man. Crawford sits in a natural sinkhole formed from the area's soft limestone bedrock. And while the lake is small, it's fairly deep, reaching down about 24 meters at the deepest part. In July 2023, scientists from a working group within the International Union of Geological Sciences, which helps coordinate geologists around the world, proposed that the bottom of this lake should serve as the marker for the start of the Anthropocene Epoch. So geologists like to divide the history of the Earth into different chapters. You've probably heard of the Jurassic or Cretaceous periods, for instance. An epoch is one of those types of chapters, and the Anthropocene is a proposed new epoch characterized by humanity's effects on the planet. The idea is that we have changed the fundamental properties of the Earth and its systems so much with our plastics and our nuclear tests and fossil fuels that it's enough to say this is a new phase of history for the planet. Not everyone agrees that we need a new epoch for that, but the proposal has been gaining steam. And one of the things we'd like to find in order to really use this new slice of time in a proper scientific sense is one of those physical reference points. There are others out there already. For the end of the Cretaceous, for instance, we used a layer of iridium in Tunisia deposited during the impact event that killed the dinosaurs. These reference points are useful because well, it's a reference point. If two different paleontologists get to arguing about whether a T-Rex is 70 million years old or 75 million years old, they can always go back to that place in Tunisia as a starting point for where to start counting backwards from. But there's been disagreement about where to put this reference point for the Anthropocene. Ice sheets, coral reefs, the fact that those are disappearing is kind of part of the whole problem. So what's so great about Crawford Lake? Well, like an ogre or an onion, it's got layers. In the bottom of the lake, there's mud that builds up little by little over the years. This by itself isn't unique, that's what mud does, but this lake's got a combination of interesting things about it. Firstly, Crawford's water doesn't mix. Because of how deep and narrow the lake is, the bottom layer of the lake water doesn't mix with the water above. There's no wind powerful enough to churn things up. There also aren't a lot of critters living at the bottom of the lake. This means there's not a lot to mix around the water or the mud. Each layer of sediment stays pretty much exactly where it falls. Secondly, the chemistry of this lake does something funny each summer, because it's not just dead leaves and goose poop that fall to the bottom of the lake. Each summer, something else does too white, chalky crystals of calcium carbonate. Remember how I said that the lake sits in a bed of limestone? That's the stuff limestone is made of, and it's slightly soluble in water, which means the lake always has a little bit of that mineral dissolved in it. But under certain conditions, triggered by warm summer weather and algae growth, the chemistry of the lake changes just enough that the dissolved calcium carbonate falls out of solution and drifts to the bottom as little crystals. What you end up with is clear lines of brown mud from the the fall, winter, and spring, separated by a chalky white line each summer. These layers build up like tree rings, creating a continuous and regular rhythm, making it super easy to tell one year's sediments from another. Finally, oxygen is present at the lake bed. Even though the bottom layer of water doesn't mix with the one on top of it, new water does trickle in through the limestone rock bed, bringing oxygen with it. Oxygen can often be destructive, but in this case, it's incredibly helpful. We'll see why in a second. And this, scientists say, makes for kind of the perfect marker for the beginning of the Anthropocene. It's a nearly pristine record of recent centuries. Scientists have been able to use plant pollen trapped in those layers to see things like indigenous groups coming to the area and growing 
corn there for the first time. Other analyses have shown that we can also see evidence of more modern human activity via increased coal and oil burning in the area in the 1950s. This is thanks to subtle changes in nitrogen isotopes in each layer, as well as the presence of something called fly ash, which is produced when fossil fuels are burned. But what's especially key is plutonium. Plutonium is an almost entirely human-made element and had been incredibly rare in nature before we started messing with it. It's sometimes found in incredibly tiny quantities, like one part in a hundred billion in uranium ore. But humans started to purposefully synthesize it in labs in the 1940s, and nuclear weapons detonations starting in the 40s and 50s spread small amounts of it far and wide. This spike can now be found all around the world and is often what people point to as a start to the modern age. In Crawford, that signal is especially crisp. Microbes in oxygen-free environments seem to be able to dissolve and kind of spread around plutonium, making that spike a lot muddier. But that doesn't happen in Crawford's oxygen-rich waters. That's why the bottom of the lake having oxygen is so interesting. So in the end, you have a lake that collects layers of mud each year, effectively sampling the world around it, only to end off each year with a chalky white cap. And whether it's due to the lack of critters or oxygen at the bottom, the signals from each layer remain crisp and clear. All of this makes it as good a reference point as you could ask for. As for why the Anthropocene is worth delineating, we humans are changing the world incredibly quickly, to the point where we may need a scientific way to differentiate the modern age from everything that came before. Doing this allows us to think about things and ask about things in a better way. As of this video being written, Crawford isn't yet officially the reference point. One group has picked it out, but there needs to be a bit more discussion among scientists at large. But either way, by diving into this unique lake, we can see how a time and place are sometimes interlinked, whether in our own memories or in the physical world itself. And thank you for diving into this episode with us. It was made possible by our generous and, may I say, extremely cool supporters on Patreon. We've got some neat perks to say thank you, like bloopers, behind the scene peaks, and even live streams. If you'd like to get involved, you can get started at patreon.com slash scishow. Thank you.